Jesus, our Lord, the one whom we are following, was obedient. Although he was God, is God, he was obedient to his Father who sent him to the earth to fulfill his will and his commission, that being to seek and to save that which is lost, you and I, those of us who have sinned and are apart from God. He called us to follow himself. Therefore, as we have seen, it would it is natural for us to understand uh, that obedience is a major uh, focus in the life of any disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ because it was such a focal point in his life. In matter of fact, we looked in the previous lesson to note that um, through the uh, prophetic word uh, of David in Psalm 40 that it was his delight to do the will of God. And uh, it's where he derived his greatest satisfaction in, in doing and pleasing, doing the will of God and pleasing the Father by fulfilling that will. We saw that uh, to the Lord Jesus, um, the, doing the will of God was his meat. It was the thing that provided him with um, uh, sustenance. It was the thing that fed his soul. It was the thing that... that uh, uh, caused him to move forward in life. It's what it's what produced the great energy uh, that we see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. But today we want to look at the fact that while Jesus came and willingly obeyed, joyfully and willingly obeyed the will of his Father, it doesn't mean that it was always easy. And as a matter of fact, we discover in our own personal lives, as we're, we will see in the lives of Jesus and Abraham, that obedience is often very difficult. It is uh, There is a struggle involved in us um, giving ourselves over fully to the Lord. It presupposes, of course, trust. We trust that what the Lord is calling us to do is for the highest good, that it is for the benefit of all, including ourselves. And we see, for example, where the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 declares that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. It takes a faith and a trust that God will work out all things for the greatest good uh, through our obedience, those who are called according to his purpose. So the path of obedience is not easy for us to follow. It will be one of the greatest struggles that we uh, will ever know in our lives. And that, that's not an understatement. Anybody who has uh, followed the Lord Jesus Christ and has been called uh, to do that which he would have us do <clears throat> in place of what our own hearts dictate, understand the the process, that the process of emptying ourselves, as the Lord Jesus did, and we saw previously, is is not easy, uh, and and uh, it will be at times stressful and uh, difficult. We see in the fact, in fact, that the Lord Jesus Christ Himself learned obedience through the things which He suffered, and we see that in the book of. Uh, Hebrews, actually, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, where uh, it, it specifically says that Jesus learned obedience through the things which he suffered. Now, we have several different examples in the life of Jesus where this obedience uh, has, is, is demonstrated to us, or this learning obedience through the things which he suffered. First of all, we see it in the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ was subject to uh, temptation. He was subject to the testing, to the proving. And we read about it in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 1. Let's go there right now and read. And we'll see how the Lord himself suffered or endured to be able to obey the Father. It says in Matthew 4, 1, Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When the devil taketh him up into a holy city, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him upon the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. <clears throat> Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels ministered unto him. So what do we see here? We see here, first of all, <clears throat> that uh, Jesus was led um, by the Spirit into the wilderness. And this is always something that, that is difficult for us to understand. But there are times... Um, where in the wisdom of God, he will lead his people to a place of temptation. Not, not, to be, not to where God will tempt us to do evil, but that he will allow, as we see here, Satan to tempt us um, in, in, in various manners. It is, it is a test to see whether we will obey or whether we won't. <clears throat> and we see here, particularly, the fact that he was he was there fasting uh, for forty days and forty nights. So we're talking about bringing the Lord Jesus to a place of vulnerability. Uh, he, if if you, if you fast for forty days, even if it's a supernatural fast, if you fast for forty days and forty nights, um, you're you're going to get to that place where, uh, physically speaking, you're going to be debilitated. And when we're physically debilitated, we're susceptible to suggestion. We're susceptible to do things that we normally wouldn't do. So in this weakened place, we see the Lord Jesus Christ struggling to obey. But what is important to notice is the fact that he did obey. He did obey. And, and, and what we see is he constantly stuck to the revealed will of God. Satan met him at his most uh, weak point. He knew that he was hungry. He knew that he was fasting. So what's the first temptation? Well, you're the son of God. You know, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, no, no, no. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he stuck to the word. He was tested. He was tried in his, in his time of weakness. And he, he had to struggle to hold on to that word. Don't think that it was easy. I mean, we have a passage that just, you know, lays it out very, in a very condensed form. But uh, when those hunger pains are, are, are eating away at you, if I can say it that way, when those hunger pains are, are eating away at you, your stomach is growling, it's, it's a very tempting thing if you have the power to turn stone into bread to not do it. So, but he didn't. And then we can see in the, in the following temptations, the same basic process that the devil took him and he showed him and he demonstrated to him, you know, uh, if you're the son of God, cast yourself down. God will take care of you. And Jesus, being wiser than the serpent, <laughs> said to him, but it's also written. See, he stuck to the word. He stuck to the word. He, he, you know, Satan was taunting him. Satan was uh, uh, mocking him. And he wanted Jesus to act uh, to, in, 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 in an abuse of power. He wanted him to use his power to put on a show. If you're the Son of God. If you're the Son of God. If you're the Son of God. And it was just ringing. It was taunting him. Uh, but Jesus stuck to the word. He, he maintained the will of God in his life. He wasn't going to tempt the Father. And then, of course, we see in the final one where the devil took him to the high kingdom, high, high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, and tempted him by saying, I'll give this to you. It's mine, and I'll, and I'll give it to you. And, and uh, anybody in, in this life who has had any possibility to have a, a position understands the intoxication of power.
anybody understands that, that has uh, come to its borders. But Jesus, uh, because the condition that Satan put is if you've bowed down and worshipped me, Jesus said, in, in no way thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we see that the Lord Jesus had to hold to the word. There was a struggle and a battle for him uh, to hold on to that word. There's another instance, a uh, powerful instance for us here today, uh, also in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, where uh, the Lord is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's, he's, he's doing battle. He's, 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 he knows that the will of God um, is for him to be turned over to the authorities, to be mocked, to be scourged, and eventually to be uh, killed. He knew that it was going to be uh, an intense uh, fight, but the Lord was going to settle it in prayer, and that's what we often need to do. We want to fight while we're in the battle. Jesus fought the fight before the battle began. In other words, there was the battle before the battle. And if we will learn to win the battle before the battle, then we will be successful in the battle. So the Lord, the Lord here demonstrates to us that there was an immense struggle uh, within his his own soul to fulfill and to complete the will of God uh, in his life. And let's read from Matthew 26, verses 36 through 39, where it says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. So we see this weight upon the Lord Jesus Christ, this this internal struggle for him to take the final step and fulfill the the his obedience to the Father. And look at, at the things that he prays and we'll see that the very point is his his uh, uh, completing, fulfilling his obedience to the Father in verse thirty seven, or uh, verse thirty eight rather. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry you here and watch with me. Now, it doesn't get any, the struggle doesn't get any more intense than that. The struggle to, to obey doesn't get any more intense than what the Lord Jesus is demonstrating here. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, exceeding beyond sorrowful, even to the point of death. Tarry you here and watch with me. And then it says, And he went a little farther and fell on his face, praying saying, O Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. In other words, if there's another way, can you reconsider? Let's do this thing another way. But notice the resolve of Jesus. He says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now that's the main part of the story. And if, you, if we were to continue it, we would see that this happened several times. In verse 40 and beyond, it says, And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep. And he saith unto Peter, What could you not watch with me an hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time, and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And then in verse 44, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So there was a struggle for Jesus to obey. It wasn't a, a, a given. It was a struggle. It was a, it was a difficulty. We see that in the life of Jesus, and sometimes maybe that's a little bit difficult for us to fathom. But we also see this same process going on in another uh, saint of God, the, the great patriarch, uh, Abraham, the father of the faith, as he is known. He, uh, the life uh, of Abraham is an example of a man who learned obedience through very costly circumstances. And we're just going to take a minute to mention two of those so that we can understand that God will often challenge us with things that are difficult to, number one, comprehend, and number two, to fulfill and it will it will it will require something of us to continue that 
that journey we talked about in the same direction without turning back without you know as we've seen through this study that uh, as we walk on with the lord sometimes those words uh, that he gives to us become more and more difficult huh? the the sayings of jesus penetrate deeper and deeper the requirements that he has often become more difficult uh in life the, the the bar is higher the challenge is is greater the price is higher we see in the life of abraham god commanded him first off to leave all that he had and to set out on a journey at an unknown destination now we read about that in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 and uh, we see that Abraham uh, did obey he did follow the Lord he did uh, fulfill what the Lord asked him to do but we ought not to think that that was something that was uh, simple for Abraham uh, it's never easy Anybody that, that has been called to the mission field knows that it's, it's not easy to leave that which is familiar, that which, uh, from which we, we are able to have a certain sense of uh, earthly security or temporal security. It's not easy to leave our loved ones and to go off into, into the yonder sun. It's, it's, it, it may have some sort of a, a romantic appeal uh, to some people at first, but when you get out there and you start walking the walk and, and doing it for many years, it, you realize that it's, it's not, the, the romantic appeal is not sufficient. We can see that the, there, there was the, the commentary on Abraham's decision in Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 8, where it says, by faith, Abraham, huh? by faith, he had to do this thing by faith. He had to trust that uh, God was leading him in the right direction according to his plan and purpose. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive after for an inheritance, obeyed. And listen to this. And he went out not knowing whether whither he went. By faith, he surjoined uh, um sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles or tents with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise so he was he was uh, uh, in verse 10 let me read that too for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker was God so we see he had this vision he had this um, uh, word that God had given to him would he obey and Abraham or, or, or the Paul the author of, of Hebrews um, I believe it's Paul Paul the author of Hebrews um, says by faith by faith he went out so there was uh, the the fight of faith the good fight of faith that Abraham had to wage to be able to obey God and we also see in the life of Abraham what was actually a, a, an even greater test in in my mind uh, because the time came when the Lord had fulfilled his promise to give Abraham a son through Sarah in their old age which Abraham you know hoping against hope as, as Romans chapter 4 teaches us in verse 18 hope against hope he believed he received that son but then it came to the point in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1 where God said okay now bring your son and sacrifice him well we know that God never intended for Abraham to sacrifice his son but Abraham didn't know that and and the wonderful thing is that we don't see any um, hesitation on the part of Abraham he had come to a place where he knew God where he trusted God he had seen God's hand he had he had seen God's love he had uh, experienced his care through all these years so he 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 actually went with the idea of believing that God would simply raise him from the dead as he sacrificed him and Abraham brought him up to that mountain and he tied him to that makeshift altar and he raised the the uh, uh, knife to to sacrifice his son but as we know the angel called to him from uh, from the bush and said no stay your hand and then he said to him now you're approved I now know that you believe and obey God so there was a struggle to obey you don't ever think that it was easy to take his son, the, the fulfillment of the promise, his only flesh and blood son with Sarah. 
don't ever think that it was easy for him to take that up there. It was a struggle. It was a it was the fight of faith. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because fighting the good fight of faith, that struggle, that battle, is the key to our obedience in the Lord. We could never, ever obey the Lord if we didn't trust Him. Now, to live our lives at the disposition of another, of God, requires a great transformation of heart. It's the most radical change that can occur in the heart of any naturally self-centered people, such as ourselves. We see from the Word of God the, uh, the key um, to, to following the Lord in this manner it has, it has to be centered on, as we already demonstrated, first of all, faith and trust in the Lord, but that it is also walking hand in hand with an intense uh, love for God. We love God and we follow God and we obey God because He first loved us. Now, Jesus demonstrates that the natural outcome of our love is obedience. And without obedience, our love, our, our confession of love, is nothing more than, than uh, uh, lies. Let's just, let's just <laughs> black and white term. It's, it's just simply not true. Look at, uh, with me at John chapter 14, and verse 15, very brief statement that Jesus makes. He simply says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. The Lord goes on to build on that in this very same chapter in verses uh, 21 through 23, where he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus, Judas rather saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto the, to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So we see here that the, the, the test of obedience on a different level, not just trusting in God, but also loving God. Obedience is the test of our love for God. Are we willing to lay down what we think is best, what we think is right, in, 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 uh, to submit ourselves to the will of uh, a loving and all-wise God, our Father? This is a test, and it's not easy, but nonetheless, it is the true fruit of love. We also see in, in one more place that uh, love, uh, of course, is um, the, the, the point of challenge in obedience. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, he says, For this is the love of God. In other words, this is loving God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And this, is, this concords with what we saw uh, previously in Psalm 40. I delight to thy will, O my God. We demonstrate our love for God and servanthood when we live to accomplish his will and his will alone. The fight comes along the lines of faith and love for God. By His grace, He will work in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure as we struggle in this, in this uh, faith battle.